Hi there, haven't done one of these in a bit, so let me tell you how I've been. So I've been doing uh, reading for my research, so still learning algebraic K theory, learning about more about field patching and reading previous papers on that, and trying to do some of the problems uh, in the notes. And besides that, I had to do a presentation for my reading course in topological quantum field theory. So I'm going to talk about that today. Uh, I'm going to talk about the connection between 2D TQFTs and Frobenius algebras. And besides that, I also met with my prospective advisor again, and we talked about the oral exam. So I'm going to talk about that first. So the way that the oral exam works at UPenn is that you first of all have to do the oral exam, and only then can you choose an advisor, which is usually one of the people on your committee, and only then do you start doing research. So right now I'm doing like an unofficial project, but in the future this might become part of my research for my thesis. So there are basically three people in your oral committee. You get to choose who the people are. Two of them are going to be in your major area, and the other one is going to be in your minor. So uh, the major is going to uh, be asking most of the questions. So most of the questions are going to be about your major area, and the other rest of the question is going to be about the minor area, or you could instead decide to do a thesis. So if you do some expository work that is equivalent to a master thesis, they actually give you a master's for this, uh, then you don't have to do a minor on your oral exam, you can just do your major. Now the majors can be very specific or they can be very broad. They're usually more broad uh, because people aren't quite sure what they want to do uh, when they do their orals. Uh, they're still figuring it out, but I was actually quite sure coming into grad school that I wanted to do non-commutative algebra. So uh, my area major is probably going to be Brouwer theory and Galois cohomology. So we could get into that another time. I'm also going to be covering that in my course in the probably in a few months. Uh, there's still quite a bit of theory we need to develop before we get there. Uh, but that's probably going to be what my major is on. So I have to write a syllabus, uh, basically a document that says which references I'm using and which areas uh, of the material I've, I'm uh, prepared to present, basically. I can also use papers and books as references. And for my minor, I'm probably going to be doing non-commutative geometry. So I've talked a bit about non-commutative geometry before. I'm still not sure exactly what I'm going to be doing in it. Uh, I want it to somehow probably connect to my major, uh, but I'm, I'm still going to have to talk with uh, the person who is going to be for the minor on my committee, uh, because the way it works is that I'm going to be meeting with each of the committee members, with the major, I'm going to be meeting probably once a week, with the minor probably once every few weeks leading up to the exam to uh, build the syllabus and practice uh, the kind of questions they're going to ask, because they do want you to succeed. Like some, some people can be mean on the committee, but all in all, people want you to succeed. So that's the idea of the oral exam at UPenn. Uh, so it's really just building the syllabus and preparing for it, and that's what I'm doing right now. Besides that, I also gave a presentation in the reading course that I'm taking, a group reading course on topological quantum field theory, where I talked about 2D TQFTs. So let's talk first of all about what TQFTs actually are, and then we can talk about how Frobenius algebras uh, are related to 2D TQFTs. So a TQFT First, I'm going to give the very abstract categorical definition, and then I'm going to give the physical interpretation as I understand it. So it's just from the category of n cobordisms, it is a symmetric monoidal functor into finite dimensional vector spaces over some field k. So what does this mean? So first of all, this field k is going to be the ground states. The idea is that we have some patches of space, so these are going to be represented by n minus one dimensional manifolds. So these are basically patches of n minus one dimensional space. And then we have, you know, all sorts of paths through space time. And basically, for each space, 
uh, each patch of space, we associate some vector space V, which is going to be the uh, space of states. And then we have some V prime here. And this path through space time is going to be time evolution. So what happens to the states after some given time? And the main thing is that it's called the topological quantum field theory because this time evolution operator only depends on the topology of space-time. So the idea is that if I can deform this path in some way, get the same time evolution operator. So it doesn't care about deformations. Uh, this also has to have satisfy other properties. For example, it has to be functorial. So for example, if time evolves cylindrically, so just like a tube, that means that nothing happens. The time evolution operator doesn't do anything. Uh, and all sorts of other rules. But that's the main idea. Now, in 2D, we actually know how to describe these surfaces, which correspond these like 2D surfaces, which correspond to patches of space-time. Which just, the patches of space-time, I didn't say this, but they are described by n manifolds whose boundaries are so boundaries. What you imagine it is, it's one dimension higher, and the boundaries are the patch of the space you're going between. So uh, we also care about orientation, but I won't get into that. So the idea is, for example, if I have a circle here and a circle here, and then I have a tube connecting them, then this is a cobordism from the circle uh, to itself. And then if I deform this somehow, yeah, so if I go like this, this is going to give the same time evolution because I can deform it to be the same thing. And in 2D, we actually know how to describe a general uh, cobordism or general path through space-time. So all of the one-dimensional manifolds are going to be just collections of circles. Yeah, because we only care about things that are uh, compact, that are essentially small. So all of those in 1D turn out to be circles. So say we have some circles here and some circles here. We know how to describe the cobordisms between them, i.e. The, the, the paths in space-time. So the point is that in the 2D case, we understand the structure of space-time very, very well. And so we can uh, basically find paths through space-time that generate by just sewing pads together everything else. And that allows us to describe in very concrete terms the structure of this category. So now Frobenius algebras are just this algebraic object which has four maps associated to it. Yeah, so they're usually called delta, eta, epsilon, and mu. So if you know some math, this is basically an associative algebra and associative co-algebra structure. And basically, the idea is that a Frobenius algebra is just these four maps, this object, and then a bunch of equations relating these. Now, the thing about these equations is that there's a very natural graphical way to write them. And when you write them using this graphical way, they look just like cobordisms. So for example, here I've written the Frobenius relation where basically these maps are identities, then this reverse pair of pants is delta, which is called the co-multiplication, mu is called the multiplication, and then uh, this thing denotes composition in some sense. There's also some things here with tensor products that I don't want to get into, but the idea is that uh, these two things are the same, but also if we look at them as a cobordism, so if we look at them as 2D surfaces, uh, we can deform this thing into this thing. So not only is it a, an algebraic relation, it's also true in cobordisms. So we said that we only care about space-time up to topology. So if these two patches, if we think of them as patches of space-time in 2D, then you can deform one into the other. It's not trivial to see this, but it can be done. So the idea is that a Frobenius algebra encodes the exact same structure as the generators of the category. What we said before, how there's patches of space-time that just by composition, by sewing them together, we get everything else. So those correspond exactly to the structure of a Frobenius algebra. So if I have a 2D TQFT, which I call Z, then, you know, uh, as we said, the the simplest one-dimensional closed compact object is a circle. So if we look at the image of the circle, that is going to be A. 
and A is a vector space, and the images of all the generators, so for example, the image of the pair of pants, the way that uh, symmetric monoidal functors work is basically, because we have two circles here, this corresponds to a tensor product. So physically, if you have two patches of space, those are entangled, uh, entangled pieces of space-time because they go to the same point, and so their spaces of states have to be entangled, which corresponds to a tensor product, whatever that is. So we have that this gives us a map mu, which is going to correspond to multiplication. So basically it takes a tensor A tensor B and gives us A times B. So we have all of these maps that are given by generators. In fact, these four maps, plus uh, the fact that this is associative, co-associative, whatever that means, and commutative, co-commutative, and satisfies the Frobenius relations, says that a Frobenius algebra, so a commutative Frobenius algebra, is the same thing as a 2D topological quantum field theory. It turns out that you can actually go back, given a commutative Frobenius algebra, you can define a 2D TQFT. And the amazing thing is that Frobenius algebras were actually studied in the 30s in representation theory, in a completely abstract setting, and only then did people see, oh, actually, this category of, like, these patches of the space with space-time between them, it has the exact same structure as a Frobenius algebra. And there's actually generalizations of Frobenius algebras to category theory, in which this is phrased very, very nicely. But these two things actually encode the same structure. So if you give me a map between them, I can give you a map back. They're actually the same thing. So I think that is amazing. That's all I have to talk about for today, uh, but I will keep you guys posted on my orals and keep you guys posted on my research. And of course, I'll be doing uh, more videos in non-commutative algebra. And feel free to post in the comments if there's any videos of things you want to see, including shorts or informative videos, or even just like, the kind of questions you would like me to answer in the vlog. So, have a great day, do some math, I'll see you next time.